Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's a totally free way to help support my channel, and it's a great way for you to remember to come back and watch some new content. We have all kinds of new great things coming out, and today I'm super excited to announce to you a new product from 651 Vinyl. You guys have been asking for it for a really long time, and we are now carrying faux leather. So these are just a couple colors, but there's tons of great colors that they offer. And one of my favorites is this awesome holographic color. And we have this in like a rainbow and silver, and there's tons of great colors. I will link how to get these below, but they are now currently available, which is awesome. They are such fun sheets. They are 12 by 12 sheets, super easy to work with. I am going to show you guys how you can take those sheets and make really fun keychains, both with some letters and shapes. I think these are so, so fun. And once you get used to doing letters and shapes, you can move on to doing a bigger keychain where it's an actual word. And if you guys want to learn how to make these, let me know in the comments down below. I will make a video showing you how to make a word keychain. But it's really fun, really easy. And you can even iron on some of the vinyl. The holographic glitter kind kind of melted a little bit, so don't iron that one on. But it worked great on the regular without the kind of plastic coating to it and it worked really really good so I'm going to show you guys how to do that it's super easy you'll only need a couple of things to do this you will need some sort of a key ring you can get these on Amazon I will link the ones that I use down below some faux leather if you want to put any HTV on you will need HTV I used my little Cricut mini press to put my HTV on and then you'll need a fabric grip mat and your fine point blade for your Cricut machine. Let's go over to Design Space so I can show you how to set all of this up so that it cuts. In Design Space, we are going to set up our keychains, and this is such a fun way to use the faux leather, and it's different than using them for like earrings or bows. It's just another great way to use this product. So let's do one that's gonna be an initial first. So let's just do the initial B. I'm just choosing a letter, it doesn't matter. Whatever letter you want to do this, you totally can. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. And then I'm going to change my font. Now, when you're cutting this type of a design, I do recommend a thicker, heavier font rather than something that's super thin, just because the leather can tend to rip, if especially on a keychain. So you'll want to do something that's a little bit thicker and heavier. So I tend to use Impact. Um, it just depends on your personal style and what you want to do, but I'm going to go ahead and like Cooper Black's a great one too because you see how like thick and heavy it is. So let's go ahead and do Cooper Black. So I think about a two inch, two and a half inch keychain is pretty big, especially for like my size, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this size for you guys. So now what we'll need to do is get out a square. And this is how you're going to hold the two sides of your keychain together is with this little square right here. So go ahead and unlock it and then um, click on this where it's got like the four arrows and you can make it thinner and then not quite as long. And what you'll do is you'll place that on top of your B. I try to make these a little bit wider than about half an inch but you can pretty much do them however you want. But again, I do it for structure. That way it has a good quality structure. What we're gonna do now is we're going to duplicate our B. We need our B to lay the opposite direction as this one. So I want the top to touch the top of here, but without it flipping, if that makes sense. You wanna be able to sandwich them together so that they meet up. So what you can do is you go to flip and you're just gonna flip it vertically. And you'll see that when you, if you fold this over to each other, the same sides are going to touch. That way you can easily fold it over and they match. Now what I wanna do is select all three items. You wanna make sure that they are centered. So what I'm gonna do is we are gonna center them horizontally. If you don't do that, when you go to fold it over, it's not going to match up, which can cause an issue. The next important step is to weld. And what that does is it removes all the cut lines so that your little space in between, your little spacer, is attached to your bees and your bees are attached to that. 
Go ahead and just double check the sizing on your design. So this will be about six and a half inches long, which is a decent length. I'm gonna move this over to the side and we're gonna cut another one when we do this. So I'm gonna go over to the images and let's look for a bow and let's see if we can find an easy to cut bow. We're going to use this one. It looks really nice and simple. If you're looking to cut an image, you want to make sure that it is a nice solid image to cut. You don't want to try to cut something like this red one here because it has cuts all in it and it won't hold together. So you'll need something solid like this one. This is one I uploaded from, I think, Google. But this one will work really, really well. And again, I don't want to go huge on this. I don't like my keychains to be real big. So I go about two and a half. You're going to do the same thing where you're going to get a square. Go ahead and unlock it in the bottom left and thin that bad boy out and make it just a little bit longer. And then I just, again, place it in the center of the bow. Go ahead and duplicate your bow, flip it, and flip it vertical. Now with this one, I made this a little bit long, so I'm just going to reduce its length a little bit. And depending on the design that you choose, you're going to depend on how big or wide you want to make your little connector. So I think that looks pretty good. That should be plenty of space to hold our little key ring. Now you want to make sure that you align them, center them horizontally. And then you want to go ahead and weld. That way this all becomes one piece. And you could resize it here if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it a little bit longer. I think this is a pretty decent size. This one's going to be quite a bit bigger, totally fine. And we can cut these on two different colors if we want. But if you want to do the same color, just go ahead and make sure the colors are the same. Go ahead and click on make it. And it's going to show you what it looks like on your screen. I think that looks pretty gosh darn good, ready to go. To cut this, you are going to use the faux leather cut setting. I will always recommend make sure that you do some test cuts. Everybody's machine is different and some may not cut on that faux leather, but that's a great place to start. If it doesn't cut through, you can always go to the uh, different settings and try something else. I usually just cut like a small square and it works great, like an inch square. So what I'm going to do right now is just search the word leather and you have a faux leather, paper thin, paper thin. You have a faux suede, garment leather, genuine leather, metallic leather, shimmer leather, tooling leather, lots of options. So we're going to go ahead and use the faux leather setting and this one cuts with the fine point blade. So due to doing test cuts, my machine doesn't seem to like to use the faux leather setting. So what I'm going to do is I use the shimmer leather setting and that seems to work really, really well for me. So what I do is I choose shimmer leather and it's the one um, millimeter one. Click done and then this cuts with your fine point blade. You don't need anything special. And this is going to be the same for an Explore or Explore Air 2. You're going to want to do again test settings. Make sure that you test what you are cutting before you cut it. It's very important that way you don't lose material. I did a couple test cuts before I cut these out. And like I said, for me, faux leather did not work, but the shimmer leather worked. So just make sure you're testing it. A lot of people are able to use faux leather and it works great. But for whatever reason, my machine doesn't want to cut on faux leather. So let's go over to the machine. I'm going to show you what mat to use and how to load it. To cut faux leather, we're going to use the pink mat, which is your fabric grip mat. I always make sure to keep my plastic cover for it. Very important. Keeps all the dust and dirt off. It's very sticky. So you want to make sure that you set that to the side. Now with this I recommend not cutting this face down. Cut it face up because if your mat is super sticky, it's going to peel off um, some of the color if you're not careful. So just be careful about that. You can also lay down some transfer tape on your mat to help keep any of the fuzzies off. I don't typically do that. I don't have a ton of fuzzy issues when I cut these. So as you can see, just lay it on your mat. Make sure it is stuck down really, really well. And then we're going to get this loaded into the machine and ready to cut.
When you load it into your machine, you may want to move your little star wheels over, which are these little white guys, because they can dent your leather. Now, if you haven't moved your star wheels before, they may be very, very tight and hard to move. Just gently press them over to one side. We're gonna go ahead and load our mat. Just go ahead and click on the load button. And again, this just uses our fine point blade. I'm gonna double check my blade and just make sure that there is nothing on it. It looks clean and good to go. I cut some vinyl, so I just always make sure that nothing is stuck to my blade and it is ready to go. Go ahead and place that back in and we're gonna let this cut. Now that we've cut that out, we are ready to remove it from the mat. So what I do, flip my mat over, and then I gently pull my leather off while kind of bending my mat back. Do not bend your mat all the way back. You don't want to do that. It's a gentle bend. And then I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. We'll have to come back and get the center of those. And then here comes our little bow. Now the bow, there was a little issue on the cut. That was more the design, I think, less so the bow itself. But you can see it didn't cut all the way through in the corners. It got a little bit hung up, and I think part of that was because of these little sharp cuts. So you can go in and clean those up with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife, but they still came out pretty good, so we'll go ahead and do those. And then, then here are the bees, which I think came out really, really fun. So what we're going to do is we will get a ring, because you're going to put a key ring here, and fold them over, and then we'll glue them together with E6000. So let's go ahead and get ready to do that, and then we're going to have these really fun keychains. Now we're ready to glue the keychains together. I am just going to use some E6000. Highly recommend getting the small tubes of this. The large tubes tend to dry out before you can use them, and they can get pretty messy. So all I'm going to do is take my E6000, and it's so much easier with this little tube to just sort of spread it out. And the tubes tend to kind of squish out some as you go anyways. So what I do is I just take it, and you kind of want to go pretty quickly, and I just spread it all around the edge of my letter. Anywhere that, like, there's a break or a hole, I'm going to put a little bit of E6000. Try not to get it on your hand. It is pretty sticky. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is before I place these two letters together, is I'm going to take a keychain, and you could do this afterwards, but I find it a little bit easier to do it beforehand, and I probably should have done it before I put the glue on, but I wasn't thinking. And then I just loop my letter through my keychain, and then all I'm going to do is fold my letter over, and you want to make sure you get them nice and lined up. And then you just want to press them together. Now E6000 is a really strong glue. It holds really, really well, but it does have quite the smell to it. So you want to make sure that you're doing this in a ventilated room. But there is our B all together. Super fun. You're going to let this dry for about 24 hours before you really want to put it on your keys. And we'll go ahead and do the bow next. The bow I definitely want to put through my key ring before I do anything with it because that one is going to be an adventure because it is smaller with a lot more pieces and parts. So again, all I do is I just take my E6000 and don't put the E6000 on to your little flap that holds them together because that's where your key ring is going to sit and you want your key ring to be able to move a little bit. So that's like super important not to put glue on that. I do have something down protecting my surface. I am just using some cardstock. Plus it makes it a little easier for you guys to see since white on white is not always the easiest. And again, I am putting this on the back. So all we're going to do is take our bow and you're just going to fold it over. I find it pretty easy if I take my finger and try to kind of hold down the middle, but if I don't have a lot of space, that's okay. Now the one thing I'll tell you, you can slide this around a little bit, 
before it fully dries. So if you need to adjust where your design is, you can absolutely do that. So you'll just want to kind of slide it around just a little to get it nice and straight and even. Check both sides and there is your bow and your B. The other day I tried to use the big tube, it didn't work as well, but I made a C with the rainbow one. These are so fun and so easy to do. I love how they come out. Another super fun thing that you can do to make these extra special is to add some HTV. So we're just gonna add a name to the B. And I'm gonna show you really quick how to do that. So I'm gonna just change the color of my B so that you guys can see this better. It doesn't matter what color you make it. And we'll just do the name Brian. You can do anything that you want. And I'm gonna change my font. I'm gonna use, uh, that looks fine, we'll do that one. It doesn't really matter what I'm using, I'm just doing this to show you guys how to do it, but um, you can use whatever font you want, and I'm gonna turn it so that it's up and down. I think that looks pretty good. And then what we'll do is fit it so that it fits alongside of the B. That looks really, really good. Now I've already cut my B's and my bows, so I'm gonna hide those, Oops, and I clicked the wrong thing. And then we'll just cut this out by our, itself. Go ahead and click Make It, and I'm gonna show you something kind of funky that Design Space has been doing. Notice that it's not showing my entire decal, it's just showing part of it. If you click Mirror, it'll bring it back. So don't worry about it, it's just a thing that Design Space has been kind of doing. We're gonna press this with a piece of Caesar holographic. So all I'm gonna do is lay this on my keychain wherever I want it, make sure my little key ring's out of the way. Oops. And they don't stick real great. You could use some heat tape if you wanted to. I'm just gonna take my chances that it's not going to move. And we're gonna go ahead and stick that right there. Then I'm gonna cover it with a Teflon sheet that's to protect both the HTV and the faux leather. Then with my little Easy Press Mini, I'm gonna go ahead and use quite a bit of pressure and just hold this down. I'm not gonna press this for the full time. You don't necessarily have to because you're not gonna wash this. I would just be cautious and kind of test it because if you're, depending on your leather, it may, cause an issue. I'm gonna go with that for just another moment. Now it does tend to dent the leather a little bit, so you may wanna keep that in mind as well. And I'm actually going to go ahead and repress this just a little bit. Now Caesar Holographic needs to be pulled at cool, so we're gonna let this guy cool down. And once it's cool, I'm gonna go ahead and, we're gonna go ahead and peel off our heat tape or the transfer tape or uh, HTV backing and I'm gonna show you guys look how fun now this little dent does tend to go away I've done this on a couple of them and the dent does go away You want to make sure that you let your glue fully cure before you do this because you don't want to loosen up any of that glue But look how fun so you can add a little name or whatever you want to these and it's really really a fun way to make them extra personal I hope you guys had fun learning how to make faux leather keychains. This is just another great way to use faux leather. I also have videos on making bows and earrings with the faux leather, which I have linked down below for you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. It is a totally free thing that you can do. And if you hit the bell icon, it will let you know when I post a new video. I hope you guys had fun. Have a great day and happy crafting.